We were told he was a small little mini goat. <laughs> we went to go pick him up. There was nothing mini about Scooby. What you doing, big boy? We are Scott and Steve from Fuzzy Muzzy Farm Sanctuary, and this is Scooby Story for GeoBeats. Something you like up there? We came across some individuals selling goats. There were two goats, Scooby and Shaggy, who were living in a one-car tiny garage off a major highway with no backyard, no opportunity to graze, to exercise. They did not leave that garage. We had to rescue Scooby and Shaggy. Scoobaka? We felt like it was our responsibility to reach out to the owners and say, we will not buy them, but we will offer them a good loving home. The person who was trying to sell them decided to accept that offer and go with it. Say hello to Papa. They had a lot of energy to burn off, and we saw them burn that off once they were on our acres running around in the free countryside. He just seemed so excited to finally access that freedom that he probably had been longing for those first couple of years of his life. They ran around our barn over and over again, and they were galloping and jumping, and they seemed super happy. Their first couple months with us, anytime we let them out of the barn, they would just run around. I remember asking the vet on their first visit out because we always have our animals screened upon arrival for the safety of the other animals. And the vet said, if these goats are mini, I can't imagine what the full-size ones must be like. Scoobaka. Yeah. Scooby is a very big personality. He's definitely bossy. He's kind of a cross between a goat and an alien, probably upwards of 200 pounds. How about one for Mr. Luigi? Massage. Whenever I would walk near him, he would stay where he was or come up to me and just tilt his head and stare up at me with these large eyes. He is one of the smartest animals we have. People often underestimate the intelligence of goats. He realized if he turns the barn knob that he can let himself in. And the reason he wants to let himself in is we preload the stalls with their dinner and Scooby realized, hey, I can let myself in at 9 a.m. after my breakfast at 7 a.m. So what we had to do is install a top lock because Scooby can open barn doors. A lot of people don't view farm animals the way they would other animals, such as dogs or cats or bunnies. Scooby-Doo. What's up to cutie pie? I applied for a grant last year and someone from the board of trustees called me and said, I'm a little confused what you're doing with those goats and sheep. Why would a goat even need being rescued? How did you get so cute? Oh. Scooby-Doo. One of the most interesting things that first let us know there's something special about this goat is in his first week, Scooby jumped up to put his front hooves on the wall and then proceeded to keep them on the wall while stretching his head all the way back so that he was looking at us upside down. Scooby repeatedly and continues to do the Scooby stretch. We've been informed by some yoga practitioners, this is called the camel pose, but Scooby is the only goat we've ever seen who does this phenomenal upside down stretch. Pouting? Scooby has had a schoolboy crush since day one that has gone unrequited for years. No matter how often he pursues Tinkerbell, who continues to go into heat, Tinkerbell has had fleeting romances with many of the residents. She does not care for Scooby at all. He does not get the message. What happened to his ears? There they are. They're just really tiny. He's a La Mancha goat. We get a lot of laughs from Scooby. I think an animal like Scooby really helps to pull you into the present and just be there and be playful. And just watching him do whatever he's doing in that moment is such a gift. Scoobaka. Yeah.